Wish you were one of those influencers with raving fans who binge on your every word, consume all your content, buy everything you have to sell and demand even more? Then stay tuned while Authority Magazine columnist and BuzzFeed contributor Tracy Hazard shares strategies, tips, and tactics from top videocasters, podcasters, authors, and social influencers on creating that bingeable factor. Now, let's join Tracy as she explores how to rise above all the digital noise with The Binge Factor. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Binge Factor. I'm Tracy Hazard, and I always say this. I have something new for you today, right? But I have something very different than um, we normally bring you here on The Binge Factor. I have the hosts of a Wondery show. So the host of Even the Rich, Brooke Ziffrin, Arisha Skidmore-Williams, and they have quite an interesting show dynamic. It's great insights into how this show runs. Um, so if you're not familiar with uh, Wondery, just to give you a little bit of background for those newbies to the podcast industry, Wondery is a big production studio. They do it in very entertainment style. They're known for putting out a lot of great um, entertainment style podcasts that have um, a story focused or very story based in general. Um, and uh, even the rich is no exception. Um, their new series um, pulls back the curtain and dishes on someone else's craziness for a change. <laughs> Brooke and Arisha, they tell, tell the stories of some of the greatest family dynasties in history from the Merck docs to the Carters, Jay-Z and Beyonce that is. Um, and they talk about, um, my favorite, which was their episode on the Royals on from Diana to Megan, which is very interesting as well. So there's a lot going on there that's completely different than most of you are accustomed to hearing about on this show. So I'm, I'm so glad I could bring them on. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit more about them because their background as hosts is really interesting. Brooke Ziffrin. Brooke is a comedian, imp improviser, and alumna of the I.O. West Improv School where she performed on two house teams. Her love of comedy started in an early age when her parents taught her the art of sarcasm and quick wit. Podcasting is her favorite thing to do because she loves chatting the day away with Arisha and of course not having to make to put on her makeup for work, uh, which is why you won't see a video here, guys. <laughs> uh, but we will have an audiogram for those of you on YouTube. Arisha Skidmore-Williams. Arisha is a Los Angeles-based comedian. She performs improv on multiple teams, including one of the house teams at the Upright Citizens Brigade. She hails from the Chicago suburb by way of a, of a Maryland suburb, so some could say her comedy spans the country. Her comedy career officially started when she signed up for her first improv class in Baltimore and unofficially started when her brother was born and she realized making people laugh was the only way she could steal attention away from a baby. I love that. And you will see they're, they're just as fun as their bios are. The thing about this show that's so different is that it's set in four parts. So each one of the sections where they cover the family dynasties or they cover the topic, they're covering it in four parts. So it has cliffhangers and it has some other things. So this is definitely going to be one show that you're going to want to check out from a styling standpoint and take a peek behind the curtain as to how it runs when we talk right now to Brooke and Arisha. Brooke and Arisha, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to gossip about gossip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're excited to be here. Yeah, it's usually just the two of us talking about nonsense. So now, <laughs> but you guys have a great interplay together. Were you friends before? We were. Yeah, we actually met parking cars. We were valet. We worked as valets. Brooke was my boss, and <laughs> still am. Yeah, still am. She she totally <laughs> thrives in that role. <laughs> and then we ended up moving in together, or I moved in with her and her now husband. So we've been we've known each other for. We did this math. We did the before. math. I think what it was like it? five years. No, no, it's four and a half because it was, <laughs> it was, it was six months after I moved here and I moved yeah. here five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of just hit it off right away. Yeah. Because we have very, I mean, as it, anyone who listens to the show knows, we both have a very similar sarcastic personality <laughs> and it just, it goes well together. Yeah. yeah. You do have a great rapport and co-hosting is really hard. So that's what I kind of wanted to start with. It's like, you know, do you have like you know, a lot of your show is scripted. So, but do you have cues between each other? Do you argue about how you're going to handle that? Do you like plan it out ahead of time as you're reviewing the script? 
we actually don't argue with each other. I know. I was just thinking, I was like, wait, we don't argue. <laughs> like, um, I want the good line. That doesn't happen. I love yeah. it. <laughs> well, so Arisha and I both have a background in improv. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what Wondery liked about us is that we had a background in improvised comedy. And when we originally auditioned for the show, they gave us a script and they were like, just go ahead and riff and banter anywhere you want to. So the script is it's fully written and then we're able to go in and kind of like write our own jokes if we want to or rewrite anything. And a lot of time when we record, we just kind of say whatever comes to our mind. That's Mm -hmm. how both of us work best when it comes to comedy. So a a lot of the stuff when we're just talking to each other and making jokes is completely improvised. So you're interjecting when you do the little interjection and make a joke, that's all improvised. But the rest of the story as it flows, Mm -hmm. you've got a script and you're following. So yeah, yeah, there's some moments that are scripted that are just to get us to another moment that may be a little bit jokey, but a good majority of yeah. the humor is is improvised by us. So you're working with Wondery and you've got this show. Are you doing a lot of the research or are they doing a lot of that for you? They're doing everything for us, which is, I think we're both very grateful in the sense of like, they have, <laughs> they have somebody who's writing the script, who's doing the research. And we we're able to just kind of bring it to life based off what they write for us. And it's just, it's such a great collaboration in the sense of like, you know, they, we get the script, Brooke and I will go over it. We'll decide, okay, let's, let's riff here. Let's not riff here. Change the language. So it sounds a little more like you saying yeah, it. Yeah. Very much. We want it in the language that, you know, in the, the way that we talk and the way that we communicate with each other. Cause it's, it's, I think we're both agreed. That's why Wondery picked us. They, mm-hmm. they like our, how we interact with each other, our banter and all of that. And so we kind of take that, take the script and make it our own. I love that. So how do you get picked by somebody like Wondery? Like that, <laughs> I think there's somebody sitting back going, that's what I want. I want to do a show and I don't want to do this all myself. I want to get picked. How does that, how do I prep myself to get in on their radar? So Arisha actually sent me a screenshot of a casting that she saw in a Facebook group. And this is something we, we've joked about before that we do all the time. We're like, look at this. Let's do it. We're like, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. And then we never do it. And this one it just like I had been podcasting for a couple years at this point, just independently. And it felt like it was made for us. And we didn't even know it was Wondery at the time. And so she sends me the casting notice and we just recorded a quick a quick audition just about our experience with podcasting, our friendship, all of that. And they're like, we really love your banter. And we did, I think, three rounds of auditions. Mm-hmm. The final mm-hmm. round was we went into the Wondery studio. And I actually, like, I didn't know that much about the podcast world and networks and stuff like that. My husband is a huge podcast fan. And he's like, well, what's the network? And I was like, Wondery. And he's like, no way, it's Wondery. And I was like, oh, is that, is that good? <laughs> is that a good like, thing? I, <laughs> yeah. And he was like, uh, yeah, that's a really great network. And so her and I were both like, oh, okay. Cause yeah. you know, I had no idea until <laughs> Ross was like, yeah, that's a real legitimate. <laughs> yeah. Up until this point, we were like, oh, whatever, you know, we're just doing independent stuff. It's probably not a big deal. And so when we found out it was such a great company, we were like, oh, okay, let's be serious about this. No, <laughs> we, we were always serious, but yeah, and they, they just really seemed to like us together and that's how it all happened. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't your first show though. You guys had been tapping into the podcast industry, so you had the right yeah. reality mm-hmm. and you did a bachelor recap section on that. And so, you know, how did you find the difference going from what you'd been doing there to going into this wonderfully produced with all the help and support? <laughs> I will definitely say it's a lot easier to not have to navigate both sides of recording and putting out a piece. With The Right Reality, we had somebody who was underneath the umbrella who was more on the challenge side who would actually do the editing. And with our Bachelor Recap podcast, it was a lot. It was not scripted at all. So it was just Mm -hmm. kind of like we would watch episodes usually together and then take these notes and then talk about it. So then you just got to like turn on the mic and riff. So (laughs) basically, yeah. 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 (laughs) And I still, the right reality is still going. I still do that podcast. And it's crazy because it's just such a difference. Like Mm -hmm. on the right reality podcast, I just say whatever I want and truly truly. truly unfiltered whatever (laughs) I want. And it's like, it's definitely an adjustment coming to a place like Wondery where, you know, I mean, my humor, I'll go as hard as I want on the right reality. But like, you know, we kind of let it tone it down a little bit on with Wondery. So that's kind of a difference for us, too, is just finding those moments where we can be ourselves and banter, but also keep the story going. (laughs) I love that. Well, you know, do they promote the show or do you have to do some promotion, too? 
Wondery, they have a really great, they have a PR company that they work with. They have a, a great marketing team. Mm-hmm. They do all of that. I mean, her and I both will post when the show is up and promote it as much as we can, but they have an amazing team that handles a lot of that. It was also. a lot harder when you were doing the right reality, right? Yeah, <laughs> you're like trying yeah. to get listeners there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All like, please just listen. <laughs> yeah. Please. I'm begging you. We have a show. <laughs> we all are out there doing that. So <laughs> I know. I know. Still doing it. So, you know, I like to touch on the bingeability factor and I want to hit on this right now because, because before we talk about a few more things. So, so what do you think your bingeability is? That's a great question. And it's, it's hard because I feel like it can be a little bit subjective. Like, why is X, Y, and Z? Why are they listening to this show? But I think it's, I mean, it's juicy stuff. And it's stuff that we, we, we're talking about people we all know exist. And we've all, we all know certain things about these people that we've seen in headlines, that we've maybe read in articles, but we're going deeper. And I think that there's something exciting about that. And plus, rich people just, I don't know, they're like, it's, to me at least, they're very, they're fascinating in the sense of they're a different, they're almost like a different species. Like they just live. Like they just, I mean, the idea of like, oh, I have an $8 million yacht that I just hang out on. I cannot fathom that. I'm lucky to have like an $80 car at this point <laughs> to hang out in. So it's just like, it's, I think it's, there's just that kind of almost morbid fascination with, you know, a lot of money, having a lot of money and what that brings for you. Yeah. What do you think, Brooke? Well, so all of our shows, we do a four four episode arc mm-hmm. for each season. So we always, tr- we kind of leave it on like a cliffhanger each episode, if you want to say that. And like, okay, well, you got to find out the rest of these juicy details on the next episode. So anybody going back and finding it later, I think it's easy to binge because you're like, well, I, I have to know what happens in this story. And so I know a lot of people kind of found us because of season one, which was Princess Diana and Meghan Markle. Mm-hmm. And that's such a hot topic right now. So a lot of people found us because of that and then stuck with it. And I think we hear a lot of people from a lot of people that are like, I just like, I just binged your whole thing. Like, especially during quarantine, if you don't have anything else to do, you're like, I'm going to listen to this whole series. And that's what we're hearing a lot of people. It's just, yeah. I think the cliffhangers really help make it bingeable. I think also just, it's an easy 45 minutes. Like it's yeah. not like you, I feel, I've heard from people saying that, oh my gosh, the time goes by so fast. I can't believe we're already at the end of this episode. And I think that helps. Like when mm-hmm. you don't realize how much it's like, oh shit, a whole hour has passed. It's nice. It's a nice feeling. <laughs> yeah. Especially in quarantine. You need to pass that time as quickly as yeah. possible. Well, I think you two have hit on what I, you know, so I always cycle and analyze the shows and give you, because I've reviewed so many shows here, the bingeability <laughs> factor. So I think you've really hit on it. First off, it's like people, human beings are hardwired to want to know the whole story. Mm-hmm. Right. So by you leaving those cliffhangers in, there's no way I'm not going to finish. Even if, yeah. but, you know, the funny thing is, even if the story isn't totally exciting to me, and then like, we still can't stand that we don't know what happens next. <laughs> yeah. Like that's a human being thing. So you're tapping into that, that so once they find your show. They're like, we're going to keep going through. Mm -hmm. But it's the team fun. The fun that you two have interacting with it. And that, as you you said, Arisha, that it is this fact that you have no concept of like what that lifestyle is like, that Mm -hmm. it makes us feel like more like, oh, okay, so we're not alone. We don't know what that's like either. (laughs) Like, you know, like, you know, I think if there was some stuffy British voice talking about, you know, Meghan Markle, then we wouldn't be, we would be like, oh, that's a documentary. Like it's filtered. Instead, it's your outside view of it, which is a little more tampered in this reality of like, yeah, life isn't really like that for most people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Instead, it's our terrible British accents. Uh, which, <laughs> which are really fun. <laughs> they love them. <laughs> yeah, which is really fun that you tap into those on occasion. So you guys have a lot of fun on the show. And that I think really comes across too. It makes you like want to, you know, we're sitting there getting to gossip with you too. Like like yeah, all yeah. girlfriends, you know, that kind of mm-hmm, thing. So yeah. I think that's a lot of fun. Did it ever occur to you that people might listen to you on double speed? No. Oh my god. Not until this second. Not until, yeah, right. This <laughs> so second. I'm going to just <laughs> tell you that you guys are even funnier on double speed. Oh my gosh. And it's not because you sound like chipmunks. It's like the jokes come faster. It's like a different style. So I, because I have to listen to so many shows in order to do my job here that I tend to like, I got to squeeze you into 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so I, for three days, I, you know, for four days actually, because I I gave you a fourth day because I could not finish the story. Right. (laughs) So, so for four days in a row, I, I would put it on double speed while I was doing my hair and my makeup every morning so that I could be prepped and ready for 
for our interview. And I wow. had to put you on double speed in order to cram it into the amount of time I had. And so I felt guilty about it at the beginning. So I was like, <laughs> I would like tap it out and then bring it back again. But it, I realized I wasn't losing. I was afraid I was going to lose some of your styling. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I did that. But I realized I didn't. It actually was just, it's just that's as funny. So funny. Are you finding that we're less funny in normal time right now? No, 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 no. She's going to do this interview. It's going to be gonna double speed, speed this up. You guys need help. I'm going to speed it up to listen to the answer. Yeah, don't worry. I'll do that on the production side. No, no. But, I, but you know, this pod fasting is a thing. And so that's what we call it in the industry. It's called pod fasting. And it's where people are like, I have a 30 minute commute. So it doesn't matter what the show is. I got to squeeze it into my 30 minutes or whatever yeah. that might be. Or the time while my kids are, you know, in ballet, whatever it right. is, it's got to fit in that time frame. And so, yeah, so that's what they do. Wow. And, and those are serious podcast listeners who do that. Yeah. But you guys are great on that. So, hey, it okay, works good. out. That's good to know. <laughs> I thought I talked fast already. So, like, <laughs> so yeah. fast. Well, so this is, this is a funny, I obviously talk fast. And <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, but my husband doesn't. So we co-host mm. together. You have that sort of like, he yeah. is kind of methodic. So like, <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know how anybody could do anything but listen on double speed. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's my... My view as a listener, which is terrible. So terrible because then you listen to me and I'm way too fast. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I love that. I, I love that you do that. So now you mentioned briefly that things are a little different in quarantine. Mm -hmm. So like listening is different. How is recording different? Or did you go into a studio to do it before and now you're having to do it elsewhere or are you just on hiatus for recording right now? Yeah, we were going into the Wondery Studios originally to record, and now we have a pretty sweet home setup. <laughs> yeah, it looks um, pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the beginning. There were some growing pains. I think yeah. the first day we recorded, it took us, unfortunately, maybe like hours to actually figure out all the yeah. equipment and get it set up. But we're mostly smooth sailing now. Yeah, I, this is actually Arisha's old bedroom. Yeah. That we, <laughs> yep. <laughs> when we finally got rid of her, we turned this into... <laughs> We turned this into a studio and my husband's very, very crafty handy. Yes. He, you can kind of see them behind me. He made all these soundproofing panels in this room. So nice. there's like four on the ceiling. There's this wall. There's a side wall. There's two behind Arisha. And we kind of just made this our mm -hmm. studio. And the first time we recorded an actual episode, we were in my bedroom. We had like <gasps> oh a gosh, mattress up on the ceiling, like trying to keep <laughs> the sound any way yeah. we could. It was ridiculous, but... <laughs> We've, We've come a long smooth way. Smooth sailing now, yeah. Yeah, well, it sounds really good. So you're doing well now. <laughs> oh, I love that. Do you find it different though? Like when you're in the studio and now that you're, you know, sort of in the space, do you have cues between the two of you as to how you co-host? And so like in case you want to make some changes, I mean, how do you give an improv cue? Ooh, I don't really think we do. I think her and I are so, we're truly lucky to yeah. have the rapport and the chemistry that we do. Yes. And especially for two people who actually have never performed improv together. I know that's outside I, of this. Yeah. We've done it separately, but it just kind of comes and you can kind of like tell when the other person's going to say something and mm -hmm. you let them fall back or you kind of fall back. But in the studio, we had all these big mics in between us. So we could see each other, yeah. but it wasn't as well as we can see each other now. We're just so literally it's actually across the easier room. now. <laughs> it oh, is. Yeah. And, you know, even our producers have kind of found like, you guys seem a little more lighter now that you're yeah. at home. It's just more relaxed and kind of feels like our environment. So I, I feel like that really helps us kind of improvise and be comfortable. <laughs> I love that. Well, you have had some great successes. You got to 23 on the charts. You yes. got to number six in society and culture, which yes. is actually really hard to do because there's lots of really great podcasts in that yeah. category. You yeah. beat out Conan and Oprah. Girl. Yes. <laughs> that will forever be our shining I, that's moment. That's going on my gravestone. <laughs> that's a pretty big deal. So has it afforded you some other, you know, perks, some other authority in the marketplace? And the next time you go into an audition, you're going to go like, hey, I beat out Oprah. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm dropping that Wondery name every chance I get. Yeah. <laughs> For audition, I'm like, I host a Wondery show. <laughs> I haven't gotten to drop the Conan O'Brien and Oprah thing yet, though. But I think you should. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to. <laughs> I should just, every time I interact with somebody, I should lead with. Yeah. I beat out Conan and Oprah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. We actually ran into Conan. <laughs> this is such an insane <laughs> story. So Arisha and I, so there's this thing called Podfront where advertisers can come and hear about new shows, decide if they want to advertise on your show. Mm -hmm. And this was right after we had found out we got we had gotten the job. Yeah. And so we're like going in and presenting to these advertisers and it was crazy for us. And afterwards, Arisha's like, 
Conan O'Brien was just standing right there. And yeah, I didn't Brooke see was, him. Okay, this is classic Brooke. I'm standing with or giving our mics back to the sound person or whatever. And he's literally like you could reach him. Like it's not the six feet thing. You could definitely like reach out and touch him, especially with his long arms. And Brooke's standing right next to me. And I give her a look. And this is an example of when we are not in sync. And she looks back at me and I assume it's because she's like sees him. And then he like goes in and I was like, can you believe that? And she's like, what? <laughs> that was Conan O'Brien. So then I made her wait. Yeah. So then classic Arisha <laughs> makes us sit in the lobby on this bench, just waiting for him to come out. And then he finally does come out. Mm-hmm. And the three of us look at each other very awkwardly. Nobody says anything. Mm-hmm. He looks dr- like dead in my eyes. And yeah. I was like, he, should he I say something? He recognized another successful yeah. podcast host. Yeah, is that's when it what was. it was. Yeah. yeah, he's like, I feel like these two are going to beat me out at some point on the charts. Like, I so s- I'm not saying anything. Game recognized game. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But see, everyone listening, this is an example. Like, this is a relationship <laughs> and you can see why the show and the synergy between the two of them is yeah. working. You know, it's such a good thing that you applied together because you can so see that they could never have done this. And I understand that you're the first co-hosted show in this genre for Wondery. Mm-hmm. Did they wanted that from the beginning or that was just what you presented when you auditioned? They were the post that Arisha mm-hmm. had sent me, they were looking for, was it female or just it was, comedic duos? It was two female hosts or if I'm remembering correctly, it was for two female hosts to lead like comedic hosts or one female host, which it sounded like they were thinking about pairing up with another person if they like could find a match. So, yeah, but they were originally looking for like comedic they wanted duos. duos. Yeah, yeah. They wanted two people. So, you know, normally I do these five tips, but we're not going to do them because you have a production team that does that at mm-hmm. Wondery. And, mm-hmm. you know, and so we're not going to go into all of that. But what I really want to do is ask this one question and, and see if you can give our audience some advice here. And mm-hmm. that's what traits do you think make a good host? So for I think for our show specifically, I mean, obviously hosting with a co-host is different, mm-hmm. but I've said this before. I feel like someone who can just talk about whatever like the gift of gab Mm. truly makes a great host that's always been what I think makes me an an okay host I'm not going to be like I'm the best host but I think I can talk to anybody about pretty much anything if Mm -hmm. if I have a little bit of a backstory on it and just being ourselves that's really important to me is like I know these scripts are scripted obviously that's why they're called scripts but it's important for me to be authentic in who I am, mm-hmm. and especially for Rishai, because we are comedians and we want to be ourselves and that's where the comedy comes in. So I think just being able to be comfortable, feel like you're having a conversation more so than I'm just reading the script to you. Here's a story. For me, yeah. that's a big thing that if I feel like I can relate and connect to a host, then I think that makes them a good host. What Arisha? about you, Rishai? <laughs> She's like, hmm, let me think. Brooke said it so well. I agree with all of that. And I, to add to that, I think caring about or having some interest in what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't relate to it, but it's curiosity, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think that having passion, I mean, so much of the stuff that we talk about, I didn't know anything about, but I'm interested, borderline fascinated by so much of it that I think that that helps. And if you're listening to somebody talk about something they don't give two things about, (laughs) You're not going to like, why keep listening? Because they clearly don't care. So I think just having that kind of passion doesn't have to be full on. Like I know every single detail about everything. And don't worry, listeners will let you know if you get it wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just. That just was think- my next question for you. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> listeners let you know when they get it wrong, especially because you've got mm-hmm. some super fans, like especially when you're talking about the Royals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> we. And. and <laughs> just as my eyes go dead like we for us it's different because like I said when we with our other show it was on a smaller scale I mean we had people reaching out to us of course and saying they love the show and whatever but Mm -hmm. I don't think her and I were fully prepared for the chaos that is iTunes reviews (laughs) so so do you read your reviews not anymore (laughs) <laughs> so I'm at the point so we we read them initially not like all of them but it was just like oh let, let's check in and see where we are right after this had been dropped and then learned almost instantaneously this this is why you don't do this this is not necessary <laughs> do not read your own reviews there you go good to don't know read your own reviews. because people will pick out just the littlest craziest thing and just mm-hmm. and run with it and you know like we want to do and say the right thing like we mm-hmm. never want to truly offend anybody so we do 
welcome feedback and we yeah, have changed things due to feedback, but yeah. you can't just, you can't go. And every once in a while, you'll see something negative and it could be amidst a hundred uh-huh. positive things and you yeah. just focus on that negative yeah. and you're like, I'm a terrible host. I'm not funny. I shouldn't do yep. this anymore. It's crazy. Well, and then you read things that are just, there There will be reviews that are that are just factually untrue and and it's just, there's nothing you can do about it. Like one of the reviews was said that I was a white woman and it was like, I, especially in the midst of what's going on in the country, it's like, I'm not. And why would you say that? And it's like, there's nothing you can do about it. And so you just kind of like, I don't need to read these because I have no control of them. Yeah. Let me focus on what I can control. Yeah. It's crazy. Yep. <laughs> Well, so I had one of my podcasts we did over 580 episodes. Mm. Wow. And yeah, so just that's just one of them. And so I got, <laughs> and it was the one I co hosted with my husband. It's all about tech. It's about like 3D printing, really geeky. And <laughs> I, every so often we would get hate mail. We would get this mm. like nasty message and it wasn't in the reviews, but we'd get an email about it. Like, oh, Tracy's a voice is so annoying. Like this whole thing. And I'm like, you know, you don't have to subscribe. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to listen, right? <laughs> I told Arisha my new thing is I'm on a quest to make <laughs> to make it a rule that you have to put your first and last name at your on your iTunes review. That is because <laughs> it would change everything. Change. It will change <laughs> yeah. everything. There are people like this and I'll never understand it where they have there's no reason to say that. Like mm-hmm. what does it matter how somebody's voice sounds? Nobody's got a gun to your head saying you have to listen. <laughs> yeah. So why even put that comment on? Stop listening and move on with your life. But it's like, <laughs> no, I've got to come after this person I don't know, I've never met. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I, I have kind of learned through this process is that, and I mean, I've always known this, but they're people. Like, we're all people. And we can't say who, but somebody, when, somebody we talked, we spoke about, and we covered on our show, a relative reached out to us and was like, we love what you're doing. And that just kind of put it into perspective where it's like people like we're talking about people and I think we're we honor that and we respect them even when they have they make poor choices in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I just think that (laughs) it's important to remember that as, you know, listeners and just people like at the end of the day, we're people, the people we're talking about are actual people. Let's have some respect for that. I think we were allowed to say what family the person was from, no? That we have it on good authority. Basically, (laughs) we'll say we have it on good authority. That someone in the Murdoch family heard our podcast. Oh, yeah. oh and so so for those of you who are listening, they have a <laughs> they have a four segment section on the Murdoch family. So I could yeah. see why they'd be a little nasty to you. They, no, they were they nasty. They were they so were nice. They oh, that's so what. That, yeah, that's so surprise. Like, yeah. yeah. So like hearing a relative say, "Hey, I love your show. I'm listening to it. This person that you guys mentioned in the show, I'm listening to it is listening to it as well." And they enjoy it was like, thank you. Like, it's great <laughs> wow. that they appreciate it. And we're, I, mean, I think that just kind of speaks to how we are telling these stories mm-hmm. where we're trying to remember that there are people behind these stories. They're not just names on a piece of paper. And I would love for people who listen that have something <laughs> negative to remember that as well. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're all people. Mm-hmm. Let's treat us with the respect. Yeah. Maybe Megan's listening. Maybe. Yeah. Hey, Megan. <laughs> I would love to talk to you about your style and what it's like to be married to a royal. Yeah, really. And also getting drinks. I really want to get drinks with her. Oh, okay. You can come. Oh, great. She- All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, have you guys become podcast fans? Brooke, you said your husband was a, po- mm-hmm. a big podcast mm-hmm. fan before. Have you become fans? Have you sp- like listened to other shows to try to hone your craft a little more? Like, you know, has that occurred because of podcasting? Yeah. So I actually, this is my new tactic for seeing what people may be saying about our show. I go and I find shows similar (laughs) to our show and I listen to them and I look at their reviews. And I was like, Mm -hmm. if people are mad about this on your show, they may be mad about it on our show. And so (laughs) instead of (laughs) So it makes you feel better? (laughs) Almost. But it's like, okay, I don't have to hear this direct feedback. I'm just getting it secondhand and I'll implement it. (laughs) So So I implement it before someone comments on mine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's like Red Hand is one that Wondery actually had told us about to check out because it's two female friends hosting. It's a true crime podcast, but it was kind of, it's kind of a similar vibe to friends talking about crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so we checked that one out. And then there's some other like female hosted podcasts that are kind of um, comedic that I listen to, to kind of just get a sense of what people who are maybe listening to our show are also listening to and, you know, doing my own research that way. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, 
it, I may have mentioned this earlier on, guys, but I met Brooke and Arisha because they applied into my Authority Magazine article. And in there, you both put two shows that you thought were kind of great. <clears throat> Whitney Cumming show, which I yes. can see why mm. you would like that from yes. a com- mm-hmm. comedic standpoint. And Justin Long was the other one that was mm-hmm. mentioned yeah. in the show. And, you know, those are really great shows to model in terms of how they operate them and how, yes. you know, Whitney does a, a monologue basically through most yeah. of it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot to sustain. Yeah, she's one of those people who I would just listen to talk forever. She's so funny to me. I yeah. absolutely adore her. Yeah. And Arisha's got a big crush on Justin Long. So <laughs> <laughs> that's not why I listen. That's not the only reason I listen. Uh, but yeah, I don't crush on him. I think he's so funny. He's very funny. I love interview podcasts when they're in- talking with people, which isn't so much what we have. Although the last episode of each series will is us interviewing. But I just, I don't know. I like what I love about Justin's podcast is it, it feels very it's personal. Like, you know, he's talking about to people and they're talking about their own experiences. And I just, I'm a big fan that we can all relate to each other in some way or another. Mm -hmm. It's just finding out how. And I think his show does a great job of finding that thread. I love that. Yeah, me too. So what's on tap next for you? Where is this going to go? Do you well, mean if we make it out of Corona? <laughs> yes. yes. Well, Possibilities either. Are yeah. endless. <laughs> Personally, professionally, yeah. Where's it going for you? <laughs> so Arisha and I are kind of in the same boat of we really want to continue doing things together. Mm-hmm. We enjoy doing comedy together. Yeah. We've always wanted to, like I said, we have tons of ideas that we just need to implement Clearly, we can only do things when someone else is doing them for us. So we yes. need, we need to like, you know, really get going. But we kind of we've always wanted to like write a web series about our friendship or mm-hmm. a TV show about our friendship. Yeah. Maybe I'm happy to keep podcasting for as long as people feel like listening to us. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. I always say I would love us to be the next Broad City. That is like my big mm-hmm. dream because mm-hmm. I love Broad City. I think they're so funny. So funny. That's that's my ultimate dream. <laughs> I think it's just being able to do stuff creatively together is kind of our goal and whatever we can do with that is aces in our book. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, this is a hard city to navigate Los Angeles, obviously. And I just, I feel so grateful that I have somebody who gets me and is navigating it with me. I think it's just so cool that we get to do it together. Yeah. And I think we're lucky that our comedy is just very authentic. Like never have we tried with each other like it's just con- like half the time we're talking like we're recording it's it's literally just stuff we would have said not recording yeah and so it's just that's something that I think is unique and doesn't come along very often so tapping into that however we can I think is yeah. what we'd like to do so we're gonna force it on people for as long as we can yes basically. <laughs> we're gonna force it and force it and force it <laughs> So, you know, you were mentioning that this is a hard city and LA is a hard city. And, oh, yeah. and, and mm-hmm. you know, doing that entertainment style podcasting is a hard model. Like mm-hmm. there's there's not a ton of shows out there. It's really competitive. What advice do you have for someone who, who really has a desire to do that, whether they want to do it themselves and start up, a, you know, an entertainment style show themselves or work with a group like One Dream? I think you literally just just do it. Mm-hmm. Like you can buy, I have some microphones behind me. This one right here is only 45 bucks. You can get this <laughs> microphone on Amazon and it sounds really great. Actually, we're lucky obviously to have all this equipment that Wondery sent us, but my other podcasts, we were just like, you know what? Let's do it. You can buy a recorder for a couple bucks. You can buy a, an, a, a, a mic- oh my God, I can't talk. You can buy a microphone on Amazon. You can get Audacity, which is a free program on your computer and just record. Like yeah. just do it. It's really, it's easy to get started. And yeah, there's a ton of podcasts out there, but if you truly, like if you can find somebody who you have great chemistry with, who people like listening to, then you can really just, I'm a big proponent of like, just try it on your own and see what happens. And you can even email Wondery or any of these networks and say, Hey, I got this show. Want to take a listen? And what yeah. do you think? Yeah. Go from there. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. I feel like it's really it's important to not wait for everything to be perfect because it's so easy to say, oh, I need to have this in line and I need to have this set up. But at the end of the day, what do you have fun doing? And then just do it. And I'm saying this as somebody who struggles all the time with, I came out here, I originally moved out here to write and I don't write as much as I want to. But the fact is you can't just wait for things align perfectly. You have to go out and get it, make things happen. And so I think the most important thing is to do something that you enjoy. And if you're enjoying it, then even if it's not as successful as you might want it to be, you're having fun. And at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, what's the point? Yeah. And, you know, this opportunity was truly 
preparation and luck meeting. Like it really yeah. was. And yeah. it was perfect for us. And yep. we, like I said, we had no idea. We thought maybe this was just some podcast we were going to record in some guy's garage. And, yeah. <laughs> and they were Truly. like, oh, it's Wondery. Yeah. Okay, There's great. actually a studio there. It's a lot safer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, oh. it helps. Yeah. And we actually like, like Brooke mentioned before, we, this was something we would do all the time. Like she would see something on some page, send it to me and say, we should submit vice versa. Most of the time I would forget to submit and she would submit. And there are, there are many times that we submitted, never heard anything. So it's not like this was the very first time that we had ever tried to do something. Yeah. And I mean, any story of success has so many stories of not success and that's yeah. just normal. So don't let that like derail you because mm-hmm. that's, everyone talks about all the times they mess up and don't get what they want. Yeah. <laughs> and not everyone's going to like you. Remember that. Too, yeah. And, and just don't care about that. Yeah. Do it for yourself more than anything <laughs> yeah. else. Well, Arisha Brooke, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been yeah. so fascinating. Thank you for giving me uh, some insight into how things work when you do a highly produced show. And thank you for sharing <laughs> your journey with us so that we could get a sense of how, how there are those of us out there who might want to try that too. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tracy, so yeah, much for having thank us. Thank you so much. So I hope you found that as fun and fascinating as I did and such insights into how this works and, you know, how nice it is for those of us independent podcasters to like think about what it's like when you work with that great team, right? Who's prepping you. So, you know, just a little reveal here to make sure that, you know, I, you guys know I'm really lucky and I have a full production team on the after, on the post side of things, right? After it's recorded. But I do all of my own prep here because I, you know, I don't have that kind of team that Wondry has for Brooke and, and Arisha. And so, you know, even the rich and these types of shows that are much more story-based require a lot of research. And for the independent podcasters out there who I've talked to, who I've, I've spoken with about how they prepare their true crime stories or all of that, that research portion takes an inordinate amount of time. And so being able to tap in and step into it and just handle that comedic side of things to be able to personalize it and make a special, Brooke and Arisha are really lucky. And I'm, I know that they know that. Um, and that. But it's also in this case, because they're not so mired down with all of that history and the research and the things that they have to do, it allows them to be more free with the show. The show gets produced faster, right? Because there's team involved in it. And that can be the frustrating thing and the hard thing about sustaining a podcast when you're trying to do it on your own. My strong recommendation to you um, is to go listen to the show, hear how it is. If you're thinking about doing any kind of these um, gossipy talk show or, or, you know, kind of serials in which you're reviewing something or historically looking at something or telling stories about something, really check out how they're doing it because the personality that Brooke and Arisha interject into this is just amazing. And it really, it really serves the show extremely well. And for those of you who are afraid of getting a co-host out there, well, take a listen as well, because you don't want to miss the idea that, you know, there really is a way for, um, for you to go back and forth between one taking sort of a back step and one uh, leaning back into it, um, one being sarcastic and one being, you know, cute and funny, like whatever it is that your model is, there's a model out there and listening to shows um, like even the rich will help you broaden that view of how could my show be produced? How could I be better at hosting, right? Or co-hosting in the case and listen to Brooke and Arisha's advice because it's spot on for all of that. So all the uh, links to everything for even, even the rich and to connect up with Brooke and Arisha will be in the blog post for this episode at the binge And uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a bunch of new applications in there. So if you've got a brand new show, there's still a way for you to get featured on The Binge Factor. And for those of you who are doing seasoned podcasts but are sitting back wondering, do I really have a bingeable show? I'd love to review that for you. So make sure and apply at thebingefactor.com. Looking forward to being back with you and bringing you more new and interesting podcasts and podcast hosts as we continue The Binge Factor series. You've been listening to The Binge Factor Podcast. For more information on podcasting and video casting success tips and tactics, please go to thebingefactor.com. And be sure to listen to our other show for podcasters called Feed Your Brand. If you'd like to be interviewed on this show, as well as featured in Tracy's column, please go to thebingefactor.com slash guest and apply. <laughs>